Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Elevenses. I'm Elva and I'm going to talk you through full funnel measurement. We're going to discuss one of the most important aspects of all things marketing, which is full funnel measurement and attribution. We'll talk through how to correctly assign value and credit to each important aspect of your customer journey. And this full funnel measurement will not only give you valuable insight about your audience, but will also hopefully help you make better decisions around bidding, targeting, and budgets. So, as we know, the simple linear journey of our customers has changed. Today's consumer enjoys a very rich journey, both online and offline, with the ability to browse anywhere on any device, anytime. This leads to customers engaging with your business in multiple different ways. And in addition to this, the digital sphere is changing quite rapidly. We're seeing more and more search traffic coming from mobile, as you have probably seen yourselves in your own marketing campaigns. In fact, data actually shows that 75% of online adults begin an activity on one device, but continue or finish it on another. So with that, we now have access to more valuable data than we've ever had before, which really helps us to get a full picture of how our customers interact with our business. Here, it's important to note that we track people, not cookies, in order to understand the customer journey. We have access to a profile and we build a profile of our customer based on thousands and thousands of new contextual signals that we have. So as this user behavior evolves, it's very important that we measure, we adapt our measurement and we adapt our way of analyzing this, which is exactly what the focus of today's discussion will be. So our deep dive into full funnel measurement will be split into three main sections. So we're going to discuss measure, which is what to measure and how to measure it. Then attribute, which is how we decide how we value this data. And then act, which is probably the most important aspect here because it decides what do we do with this full funnel data and how do we make the most of this new data that we have. So here it's really important that we take a step back and we think about what actions are really valuable to our business to decide what to measure before we dive into the how. So given this change in the consumer journey that we spoke about and also the growth in valuable available data, simply tracking conversions that contribute to your bottom line isn't enough anymore. So to get a more holistic and accurate understanding of the impact of your online ads, we really need to track every single moment that matters to your business. And as you probably know, for all marketers, just getting clicks isn't obviously enough. We need to make sure that the visitors that you're bringing onto your website are qualified and that they complete the action that you want them to take. So of course, that then brings us to conversion tracking. Most advertisers actually focus solely on the conversions that are right at the end of the customer journey. But what about all the actions and the engagements that your user took before actually completing their purchase or completing that conversion action that contributes to your bottom line? If there are numerous valuable actions that someone can take on your website, we really ideally want to track them all. But as you know, not all conversions are created equal. So here we would prompt you to think of each conversion as falling into one of the two buckets, so macro or micro conversions. We encourage you to track both macro and micro conversions, but to ensure that you're only optimizing towards those really important actions or your macro conversions. This is particularly valuable if you have a longer sales cycle, like for example, in higher education, while the most valuable action for a university might be someone applying to their program. Since for many people, there's actually a lot of research that takes place before applying. They might actually choose to track actions like brochure downloads or um, inquiry submissions or signups for tours and site engagements. In this in example, it's obviously most important for the client to optimize for applications, which is their macro conversions. So all of these additional actions are just leading indicators of someone ultimately submitting an application. So at this point, I would 
encourage you to think about your business and your website and what you want people to track and what you want people to engage in in your site. So think about the micro conversions that are contributing then to the final purchase or the final conversion, which is your macro conversion. Now, we're going to discuss now a very important framework for understanding full funnel measurement. And this is called the see, think, do care. And it divides our typical customer journey into different sections, which are directly aligned with Google measurement solutions. On the left, we have the advertising formats. And on the right, we've got the measurement solutions best suited to each stage in the funnel. This funnel describes our typical customer journey. So we've got C at the top of the funnel, which is when a user first encounters your brand or your business. And this is typically through a video or a GDN ad. And how do we track this? We can see on the right, we track this through unique reach or something like a brand lift survey, for example. Then we've got think, which is when a customer is a little bit further down the funnel and we are influencing their consideration. This can be done through generic search or something like in-market audience. How do we measure the engagement of our users at this stage? It's through micro conversions that we spoke about earlier. Then we've got do when our users are taking direct action, such as calling our business, filling out inquiry forms, or even making a purchase at this stage. This is the stage in the funnel when ideally our customers are becoming customers to us. And then we've got the care which is when our customers or our audience are becoming repeat customers and they're really contributing to our bottom line directly. Of course, it's not always as clear cut as this solution shows. For example, the remarketing advertising form on the left could be used throughout the funnel, depending on the targeting. And obviously display can also be used as a lower funnel um, performance tool if used in the correct way. So, we know that not all businesses have the same goals. Therefore, we do allow you to track a wide variety of user actions based on your business needs. For example, we've got purchases, form fill outs, calls, even online um, messaging or live chat. And these can fall into micro or macro conversions, obviously depending on your business. Now, at this stage, some of you may be thinking this all sounds great, but not all of my business transactions and interactions occur online. And a lot of my conversions in Google Ads don't actually translate into real revenue or business on my end. And this is because there's a lot that can happen behind the scenes offline, particularly for any business focused on lead generation. So you know that not all leads have the same value to your business. However, after the lead is qualified by your sales team, we actually have the full value of this lead. But how do we ensure that we make the most of this data? The solution to this is offline conversion tracking. And the process is actually pretty straightforward with this. We give you a unique Google Click ID for every ad click once you enable auto tagging. And this is passed through when a customer submits a form and then it goes directly into your CRM database. Then the lead or the sale is actually closed offline. The lead status is changed in the CRM and the CRM output is uploaded automatically into Google Ads. So that not only you, but also your Google Ads machine learning knows the full value of this lead. Now, this is something that you can learn more about by speaking with your account manager and is also a step-by-step -step guide on the Google Ads Help Center. It will involve someone who can make changes to your CRM system and it will involve your developer. Now, as we discussed, the customer journey has changed and now involves multiple touch points on multiple devices. So 79% of customers actually use their smartphones for research before a purchase, which probably doesn't surprise a lot of you. And another interesting statistic is that 60% of ads consumers found influential in their purchase were actually viewed on mobile to begin with. And as we mentioned earlier, 75% of people actually start an activity on one device, but finish it on another. However, despite all of this data, and these new findings, many of our advertisers are not properly valuing mobile or at the earlier stages in the customer journey. Currently, most advertisers are just looking at that final touch point before a conversion, but this isn't good enough because we're leaving actually really valuable insights on the table. So it's critical 
that we look at the entire customer path. So let's start looking beyond that final touch point. So let's pause here and put all of this attribution talk in context so it doesn't become too abstract. Let's think about booking a vacation or even a high ticket item like a suite of expensive furniture. Have you ever booked a vacation in one sitting on one device at the same time? Probably not. More likely your search journey looked more like this. You completed multiple searches on various devices. Maybe at the beginning, you were searching best tropical vacations on your mobile, just getting a feel for what's out there. Then as you became closer down the funnel, you decided that you wanted to go to the Bahamas. So you started searching on your desktop, bed and breakfast in Bahamas to find accommodation. And then when you had finally decided on where you wanted to stay, you searched the actual accommodation name, such as Paradise Bay Bahamas, before you actually decided to take that plunge and make the purchase and make the booking. So it's tough to understand that the impact that each touch point actually has on a final purchase. But attribution actually helps you to connect these dots to make it easier for you to understand and act on these user touch points. So Google Ads search attribution will help you assign credit across touch points that have occurred on the search network. And there's three main steps to using Google Ads search attribution data. So the first step is probably the most important, which is selecting the best model for your business. And then the second one is changing that attribution model in Google Ads, which is fairly straightforward. And then finally, we need to rethink our analysis based on this new data. So moving on to the attribution models that we've got, we've got four main attribution models, which are not last click or first click. We would recommend to use a non last click model to value all of the touch points that we spoke about. So time decay, attributes more credit as you get further along the customer journey, closer to the purchase. Linear distributes the credit equally. Position-based assigns 40% to the first click and to the last click, and then distributes the credit equally among all the other clicks. And then we've got data-driven. If your account is eligible, we always recommend you to select data-driven attribution. And why do we always recommend data-driven attribution? Well, it is the most advanced attribution model that we have, and it uses Google's machine learning to identify the most influential touch points along the customer journey. It assigns fractional credit to each keyword in the user path, and it also learns and adjusts over time so that you never have to update this model. Now, it's important to note here that we can change our attribution model, but we won't get the most effect or the most use out of it if we don't actually act on it. So that brings us to our final stage which is acting on this new data. Use the insights gained from your non-last click attribution model to drive strategic changes in your account. First one would be to leverage smart bidding. This will let Google automatically optimize your bids based on this new attribution model and based all on all this new measurement data we have. Now, the second one is very important. This is expanding into generic keywords. Think about it this way. Beforehand, you were measuring the data and measuring the performance based on a last click model, which was ignoring all the clicks, keywords, and ads earlier on in the customer journey. So we now want to reignite the upper funnel by actually introducing other keywords that we previously ignored because our older attribution model didn't convey the true value of these. So consider adding more generic keywords to try and expand and drive more strategic change. Of course, then we've got to to value mobile. Mobile obviously plays a very important part in upper funnel interactions. So you may want to boost your mobile site and your site speed and make sure that your site is mobile friendly. And then finally, we've got to ensure that you're not constrained by budget because being constrained by budget can actually limit the impact of your smart bidding, your measurement, and of course, your attribution. So we've got three main takeaways from all of this. First one is to correctly track all conversions that matter in your path to purchase to make sure that we are tracking not only the actions that impact your bottom line, but also all those micro conversions that happened along the funnel. Then, of course, with this new measurement data, we have to attribute the right value to each conversion. And that involves switching to a non-last click attribution model, ideally data driven. 
And then finally, we must act on this data to drive bidding, budget, and targeting efficiencies. So that's all from us for this week's episode of Elevenses on Full Funnel measure Measurement. Uh, see you next week. <laughs>